flight of discovery. From CBS News headquarters in New York, here is Dan Rather. And good morning, members of our space-faring nation. Rise and shine time for Space Shuttle Discovery. The final countdown clock now ticking. Patches of blue have broken on through the 500-foot layer of fog around the launch pad in Florida. The focus of the weather concern and delay since then has been the wind. Winds high aloft that could, could cause problems in case Discovery has to make an emergency landing. Now, the crew has been uh, strapped in since 5.29 a.m. Eastern time this morning. They've been strapped in on their backs since then, waiting for the weather to clear. The launch window closes at about 10.30 Eastern time this morning. That's one reason they've started the clock and we're going to try to get it in today. As of now, the countdown is back on. We've been delayed uh, from the scheduled launch time, launch time of uh, almost two hours. Uh, the five-member crew with Michael uh, Coates uh, in command now waiting to begin their five-day mission. And it looks like it may go. The main payload is a $100 million NASA communications satellite. Standing by uh, in Florida is CBS News correspondent Peter Van Sant at the Kennedy Space uh, Center. Uh, Peter, let's have the status report. We said it looks like it might go uh, at, at the nine minute they started the countdown. Uh, what are the prospects of it actually getting off? I think the prospects are pretty good. They, the fog has cleared. The big concern, as you mentioned, uh, was those winds, the crosswinds. Those are at acceptable levels right now. They have been fluctuating back and forth this morning, but we have until about 10.32 to, to try to get Discovery into, the, into space. So I think the feeling right now is that we'll be able to, uh, we will be able to do it. It had been a frustrating morning, I'll tell you. In the pre-dawn glow, the soup started to roll in here. Uh, the shuttle Discovery was completely obscured by the fog. And, and we waited and waited for the sun to do its job and, and burn it away. That has finally happened, and so there is some optimism. With me is astronaut David Hilmers, who flew on Discovery last September. And David, you've been through delays before uh, inside the orbiter. What's it like for those guys right now in there? Well, right now, Peter, they're probably down to all business right now. There, there's some switches that they need to, to throw. In about a minute, they'll be starting their auxiliary power units. Prior, probably during the, the launch period, they were trying to break the tension. They were probably telling jokes to one another, uh, try to keep it light. But I'm sure that they were very, very uncomfortable. The, the heat uh, was starting to build in with, with the sun coming through the windows. And uh, it's just kind of uncomfortable being on your back for so long. You end up, you end up getting drenched in there? Well, uh, there's, there's some sweat. You do have uh, fans, but uh, those suits are hot. Okay, so there is hope, Dan. To put the APUs in the ready-to-start configuration. Well, we're going to pick up uh, just a little bit. Let's uh, take a listen to uh, NASA Control. For one thing, uh, Lisa Malone, the first woman to be the voice of launch control, is uh, handling the launch control voice descriptions this morning. So let's pick up a little bit of uh, mood here. We're just... Uh, T minus five launch, minutes, 30 seconds. T minus five minutes and 30 seconds. Mission Control has transmitted the signal to start the flight recorders. The two recorders will collect measurements of shuttle systems performance during the flight for playback after the vehicle is in orbit. Now the next important uh, marker will be at five. That's the Coming T minus five, mar uh, five, five minutes. The pilot activates the shuttle's launch. auxiliary power units which provide pressure to the shuttle's three hydraulic systems as the countdown continues. As we mentioned, the commander of today's flight, Captain Michael Coates uh, of the U.S. Navy, whose age is 43 and his hometown is Riverside, California, was pilot of Discovery's maiden voyage in August of 1974. The pilot, U.S. Air Force Colonel. We'll pause for just a second to uh, see, hear what Launch Control was saying. We're saying uh, Colonel John Blaha of the United States Air Force, age 46, hometown San Antonio, Texas, was the Air Force test pilot uh, in the Air Force test pilot program before his selection by NASA in 1980. This will be his first flight into space, the pilot. Uh, mission specialists. Dr. James Bajian. He is a physician, hometown uh, Philadelphia, PA, age 37. This will be his uh, first shuttle flight. He's an expert in emergency met medicine and uh, mountain rescue. Also, mission specialist, United States Marine Corps Colonel, James Buckley, hometown Fargo, North Co Dakota. He's 43 years old. This will be Buckley's third shuttle flight. And also, mission specialist, United States Marine Corps Colonel Robert Springer age 46, hometown Ashland, Ohio, his first flight into space. He flew F-4s over Southeast Asia during the Vietnam War. That is the crew. This is how they will be seated in 
the uh, interior of the orbiter. As you can see, uh, the position, mission specialists be down below, the crew up topside. That's the way they that's the seating inside the orbiter itself. Now, let's pick up a little bit of uh, Lisa Malone, launch control, make sure things are going well, T minus uh, 314 and counting down. All seems to be in order as the clock continues to run. Quickly, we'll bring in Michael Collins at our Washington studios, a uh, former astronaut. Uh, good morning, uh, Michael. Good morning, Dan. Uh, I think we tend to forget what a delicate operation it is. We talk about winds aloft, fog rolling in. Everything has to be reasonably in order or you just can't get a go. Yeah, there's a lot of variables, Dan. The weather not only in Florida, but also in North Africa and out on the western part of the United States as well, because you want to get this thing down safely as well as up. Let's pick up the count now at uh, 2.36 and the county going down. What what should we be looking for in the next two and a half minutes, uh, Michael Collins, as, as the keys to, clear the to actually getting off? And the well, I think the, uh, the sequence is fairly automatic from this point tank. out. It's a uh, question of watching all the instrumentation. There are thousands and thousands of bits of information being relayed to the experts in and mission control, and the uh, they'll analyze them and make visors. sure that all the parts of the machinery are operating exactly as they should be before they'll give the go-ahead for launch. So we join the countdown, T minus two, pick it up, the voice of launch control, Lisa Malone, to be covered by, followed by the voice of mission control, Brian Welch. T minus one minute, 50 seconds and counting. We've had a go for liquid hydrogen pressurization on the external tank. One minute, 30 seconds now from the launch of Discovery and its five-member crew. The liquid hydrogen tank is being brought up to flight pressure. At T-minus one minute, the heaters on the booster joints will be deactivated. Next important benchmark on the clock. Heaters used to de-ice the external tank will be turned off. Solid rocket booster electronic control systems locked into place. Seconds away now from liftoff of Discovery. All systems are go. Coming up on T minus 31 seconds. We have a go for auto sequence start. Discovery's four redundant computers have primary control of critical vehicle functions for the remainder of the count. T minus 20 seconds. 15 seconds. T minus 13, 12, 11, 10. We have a go for main engine start. Six, five. We have main engine start. Three, two, one. SRB ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of STS-29 as Discovery clears the tower. Roll pump, roll pump down. A roger roll, Discovery. Mission Control, Houston. Good roll program confirmed. Engines now at 65 percent. Standing by for the go at throttle up call. Discovery, go at throttle up. Roger, go at throttle up. Mission Control, that call means all systems are performing well as the shuttle main engines have resumed their. Uh, 
firing at 104% of rated thrust. Relative velocity now 2,400 feet per second. Climbing at a rate of 1,700 feet per second. Downrange distance 11 nautical miles.